Hey, what's up? This is Amaranth here. With so many limited releases and collabs in the world of sneakers, it's easy to forget about all the general release stuff, which maybe doesn't get a huge amount of press coverage, but nonetheless is pretty decent overall. The Nike Pegasus Trail 2 GTX, I think are a pretty good example of that, and retailing at £130, something like $160 over in the US. And promised to be a performance all-weather trail running shoe that comes in a bunch of colours, that's still cool looking enough to be worn in a fashion context. I picked up the pure platinum version a couple of months ago, which looked like this when I bought them, and I've worn them both casually and for running, something like 50 to 60 miles total over the course of the winter, so now they look like this. Yeah. Let's have a look at how these stack up from a performance and an aesthetic perspective, as well as a couple of outfit and styling ideas towards the end as well. Are they something that are worth considering for running or lifestyle use? Let's find out. I'm often attracted to slightly futuristic shoes, and I think the Pegasus does a good job of this without really looking too unusual. The upper is sleek and form-fitting while still clearly having more structure than the various Nike sock shoes or fly-knit sneakers out there. The outside uses a printed Nike swoosh, which always makes them look a bit more performance-ready, and a shaped panel here which follows it up towards the back of the heel. This gives you a really clear visual line around the back of the shoe, almost like a racing stripe. It looks like a fast shoe, I think. It also very much has a lightweight appearance, with the upper cutting away towards the heel like that. But more importantly, look at all these details on the midsole. Not only cut out slashes throughout, but you've got this real uh, shaved out area of the midfoot here, and an all over concave shape of the midsole, which is most apparent at the heel. On the Nike ISPA 2020, Nike spoke about this gram shaving culture, this idea of runners just trying to save weight wherever possible, and that leading them to basically taking chunks out of their shoes. They applied that ethos to the Flow 2020, I feel like they've also kind of done this here to a lesser extent. It certainly looks less extreme than the Flow 2020 does, but more so than the older Nike Pegasus 37. The upper overall is fairly conventional, it's really that midsole which is where the unusual element lies. But then if we're comparing that to more recent lifestyle products, you've got the Overbreaks, you've got the Nike Sakai collabs, you've got the Daybreaks, all of those things are far more unusual than these are. It has to be said, there is a fair bit of branding on these. Of course, you've got the lateral swoosh on the outside, which of course is to be expected. We mentioned that already. You've got a mini swoosh towards the heel as well. On the instep, you've got that printed Gore-Tex logo, which is a little bit much in terms of Gore-Tex branding, but at least on the pure platinum pair, it's tonal and it's printed rather than kind of stitched or anything like that. You've also got this unique logo on the tongue, which I think is quite cool, referencing those trail characteristics of this shoe. And you've got some customized Pegasus branding on this uh, curved heel tab at the back as well. It was the tonal nature of the pure platinum pair that made me opt for those ones over the other versions. I think it makes them more appropriate it to be worn in a lifestyle context. I also think it tones down some of that branding a little bit as well, and with no particular elements or panels really kind of standing out too much from a colour perspective, it just allows the silhouette to do the talking a little bit more. Some of those other colourways, great for running, and they have a real strong kind of trail hiking running aesthetic, but they're certainly going to be more suited for that kind of activity than they are for general purpose wear. There is a black one too, of course, which would pair up even better with so much of my wardrobe, but we'll talk a little bit more about styling and wearing these later in the video, because we have to, of course, talk about the performance of these. I got these in a UK 11, which is my regular size, and I thought these were pretty much spot on from that department. You don't want running shoes to be too tight or too constrictive, and these felt like they were supportive without kind of constraining you too much, especially in the toe box, which definitely does have a little bit of breathing room in there. The neoprene tongue and the cuff are nice and comfortable. It's gonna help stop that material rubbing against your foot in any noticeable way. And there's also some additional padding at the heel as well, which is gonna help give a little bit more of a locked in feeling than it would do otherwise. Unfortunately though, because of that neoprene material, it doesn't have a lot of structure, which means that when you're doing these laces up over the top, it can feel like they're pressing a little bit too much in particular areas. So so you have to be quite careful to get that exact right level of tightness. Once they're on, for a running shoe, these feel relatively stable, although definitely more heavy than your average running shoe, but I suppose that's to be expected with the large midsole there. But they feel noticeably more full, I suppose, on foot, compared to something like the Nike Flyknit Racer, which has a very narrow instep. I feel like they've definitely avoided that problem with these. 
The Soul uses Nike React Foam, which is one of their newer technologies, and you'll see this used on a bunch of their more recent high-profile releases, the Overbreak being a particular example of that, but of course there are loads of others too. It definitely has a bit of resistance to it, it's not super squashy, but it's quite responsive too, feels like it kind of springs back a bit, so it's definitely supportive enough to be worn on that softer ground terrain when you're out there trail running, but then should you need to bring this to pavement, man-made surfaces, it can still do a pretty good job there too. Comparing this to something like the Salomon Speedcross, those are great on that softer ground, but then if you're wearing it on pavement, it's just a little bit too hard, whereas these feel great for that kind of mixed purpose use. And for someone like me, when I go out running, it tends to be on a mix of surfaces, partly road, partly trail, these seem like a great all-rounder for that kind of use. If you're wearing these casually, of course, you are probably going to be wearing them on pavement quite a lot as well. And therein lies the big benefit of this shoe to me, I think. Yeah, they are billed as a, a Gore-Tex trail running shoe, but in reality, you can use these for a whole bunch of different situations and they're going to do a fine job. Of course, we have to talk about the water-resistant properties of the Pegasus Trail 2 GTX. Of course, with that Gore-Tex technology, that means that they've infused the upper with that three-layer fabric construction designed to help stop water getting in whilst retaining an element of breathability of the shoe. From my real-world experience of running through a fair few puddles and uh, wearing these a fair bit in the rain as well, I think overall these certainly do a pretty good job. Only once when I really put my foot in an extra chunky puddle did my feet get properly wet. Interestingly though, these only have a semi-gusseted tongue, which is quite unusual for a Gore-Tex sneaker. Generally it tends to be fully attached the whole way up. This gives you a little bit potentially of extra breathability, so they're hopefully not going to get quite as sweaty as a fully contained Gore-Tex sneaker would, something like the Air Force One GTX that we looked at a couple of months ago. Of course, in theory, that means that it's more likely that water is going to get into this shoe, although as I say from my real-world experience, I haven't really found that to be a particular issue, and in general, these did a pretty good job of keeping my feet dry, certainly far better than the Flyknit Racer that I used to wear, which, of course, having a total Flyknit upper meant that my feet were getting absolutely soaked every single time. What's not so great is what happened to the colour of these. Every time I do some kind of video about Gore-Tex or water-resistant shoes, I make some joke about them also coming in this really light colour that is going to show up all the dirt. Well, who's laughing now because I went ahead and uh, I bought exactly that kind of thing, and of course, they ended up getting very dirty. If I was being smart, I would of course have bought the black version, which would no doubt conceal the dirt a lot better than these. I will give these a bit of a clean with some uh, sneakers ER stuff, I think, and uh, see how they come out. I'm sure they will look a lot nicer than uh, they do in some of that previous footage there. But to be honest, I bought these to use come rain or shine, knowing that they would probably get filthy. So I was pretty prepared for this, I'm not too bothered about it, but I would certainly say if you do plan on using them as your go to winter shoe, then uh, yeah, maybe you are going to want something that's in a darker colour so they look a bit nicer for a bit longer. Now let's talk styling. There is no arguing that these are a future athleisure shoe, so I certainly think leaning in that direction is going to do you right here. So I'm wearing these with the acronym P23, which I think with that jersey cuff there at the bottom and the overall kind of easy to move around in silhouette, I think helps get that across. But of course you don't need to be anywhere near as fancy as that, and just a regular old cool pair of track pants of some kind are probably going to do the job just fine. I'm pretty happy wearing these with relatively low-key stuff because at the end of the day these aren't some crazy outrageous fashion shoe, they're just a decent looking all-rounder, and yeah that doesn't mean that you necessarily have to try too hard with this stuff. I think they suit technical or performance outerwear stuff too. After all, it makes sense if you're wearing water-resistant footwear that some of your other clothing would be water-resistant as well, right? So I think those things together give you a bit of flexibility and versatility with how you should consider wearing or styling this shoe. And of course, that's not an exhaustive list. I'm sure there's loads of different ways you can wear this, and as I say, it's not necessarily something that you have to think too hard about. Now, admittedly, I've not worn these in warm weather yet. There are certainly more breathable shoes on the market, so I would probably consider something else, but yeah, general purpose winter wear, 
I think these will do a pretty fine job aesthetically and performance wise. So I think that gives you quite a few reasons to wear the Pegasus Trail 2 GTX. They're not necessarily going to break down any particular barriers either from a looks perspective or performance wise. Their strength really is in that kind of all round nature that they're kind of good at quite a lot of different things and therefore I think they'd make a pretty good like single shoe purchase if you want to do quite a lot of stuff. You don't necessarily need your trail running shoe, your road running shoe to run to the trails in, your other water resistant lifestyle shoe to wear down the shops. You can kind of, you know, this one thing kind of does all of those fairly well. As you can see, I've worn these a fair bit already and I'll definitely continue to do so, both from a casual perspective and using for running and trails and stuff like that as well. So that's everything on the slightly dirty Pegasus Trail 2 GTX. Let me know what you guys think of these in the comments. Are you a fan of the overall look, this kind of styling and the idea of a single shoe that's pretty good at a bunch of different things? Or maybe you prefer something a little bit more specialized that kind of goes real hard in one direction, maybe even at the expense of some other areas. Um, either way, let me know what you guys think. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, you want to see some more cool uh, sneaker reviews and stuff like that, then definitely hit that like button because it is super appreciated. And as always, thank you so much for watching and we will catch you next week with another video. Shout out to Tim. Sorry to disappoint you, but this week is just on some regular stuff you can actually buy. And shout out to Jake Silvermoon. You know I had to do it. I had to buy the Ridiculous Wizard t-shirt. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you want to catch some more, there's going to be links going up at the top. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then definitely consider doing so because we've got more cool techwear content coming out every week. I feel like I'm an autopilot when I say that phrase every single time. Don't even need the script, but there you go. New content, come and check it out. It's going to be great.